Okay, again, so when the when the star, or the source is moving tangentially or transversely to the line that separates the source and the observer, okay, then theta equals pi over two, cosine theta equals zero, and uh, you get this expression. Again, this implies that the observer uh, always uh, the observer always sees a, a measures a lower frequency than the natural frequency at the source. And again, this is a redshift. And it's called the tangential or transverse or sometimes order sometimes uh, second order redshift because first of all second order because it's second order in beta and tangential and transverse for obvious reasons because it's going transverse to the um, to the line that separates the source and the observer. So these are the relativistic expressions for the relativistic Doppler uh, shifts. Let's move on to two, uh, two different consequences of Lorentz transform now. Okay so the second effect a consequence we're going to consider is the headlight effect. Okay, so here let's imagine that we have a source that's moving with the velocity v along the x direction. Okay, and that's that in that coordinate system there's a source of light which emits uh, which emits light. Um, let's say in all directions, um, but let's cons let's uh, concentrate on a ray which is emitted at some angle theta prime with respect to the x-axis. Okay. So obviously that ray has velocity c in the both both coordinate systems, um, but the uh, we can decompose that um, velocity that uh, that ray that ray's velocity into uh, a velocity component along the x direction u x prime as measured in the in the sources reference frame, and u y prime as measured in the uh, also in the sources reference frame along the y direction. Okay, and so uh, from this we, we can clearly see that uh, that in the sources frame u x prime is just equal to c times the cosine of theta, and u u y prime is just equal to c sine theta. Theta prime, sorry. Okay, so <clears throat> and so uh, now we can use what we want to new, do first <clears throat> is transform these velocities u x prime and u y prime, which are measured in the sources frame, that is the frame which is moving with the light source. Okay, in which the light source is at rest. We're going to transform these velocities into the unprimed frame. So what does a person in the unprimed frame see? Well, we just have to use the velocity transformations, the Lorentz velocity transformations, excuse me, that, that we derived in the previous uh, lecture. Okay, I'm not going to derive the Lorentz transform equations for velocities again, but here's here's uh, the result. So uh, again, in the x direction, that is in the direction along the relative motion, right? Remember, you have the sum of the two velocities that the uh, which is in this case c cosine theta prime velocity along the x direction plus v um, divided by 1 plus v times c times cosine theta prime divided by c squared. So this factor uh, which you know is at least reminiscent of, uh, of a gamma factor. Um, in, in the transverse direction um, then you just have the velocity in this in the source frame the transverse uh, I mean in along the y direction c sine theta prime divided by gamma, the Lorentz factor, um, divided by the same factor is over here. Okay, so these are the two expressions, right? So now, um, if we, uh, we should probably check that when you sum these, when, that when you, that the total velocity is measured in the, um, in the, uh, uh, in the unprimed frame is also equal to c. I'm not going to do that, but we'll leave that as an exercise for you. That is if ux squared, um, ux squared plus uy squared must equal to um, c squared. If not, we've done something wrong. So I'll leave that for you to, uh, to work through and we'll move on from there.